Hello, I'm Christopher Schaub, and I provide listening guides to jazz and classical music. If you like the channel, please subscribe, like the video, and share with your friends. Comment if you have something to add, or if I made a mistake or something was wrong. I'd love to hear from you. Tonight we're going to be discussing Keith Jarrett's Belonging with Jan Garberick, uh, Paul Donaldson, and John Christensen. So Keith Jarrett's on piano, uh, John Garbrick's on tenor and soprano saxophone. You've got John Christensen on drums and Paul Donaldson, Danielson on double bass. This is released in 1974 on ECM Records. Um, and I will have in the description links where you can purchase the record directly from ECM, the LP. This one is actually a, um, this is an original copy, I think, in the U.S., released on Polydor USA. And it's a really great sounding if you can find one in the bins. I highly recommend you buy the vinyl if you can find it, get into vinyl. Vinyl's a great way to, to listen to jazz. Um, but I'll also include in the description links to uh, where you can stream via SongWhip. So you can stream on uh, Spotify or Apple Music or whatever you've got. So um, you can buy the album or you can stream it. The um, songs on this album are all written by Keith Jarrett. Um, it's his European quartet. He's got quartets all over the world in different continents and different eras, different sized bands, not just quartets. Uh, but his European quartet um, recorded this in 74 at uh, Arne Bendixson Studio in Oslo, Norway, and it's owned by uh, Jan Erik Honshog, who engineered the recording. Um, and the producer is the infamous Manfred Eicher. So, Manfred Eicher, I, I want to talk and digress for a second here. He's one of my favorite people. He is just amazing. He starts out as a classical musician, very educated guy, um, is into art, into Bauhaus, um, into type faces. He's just got a very eclectic background. And he brings that to ECM, starts a record label in the late 60s. ECM stands for Editions of Contemporary Music. And what he brings to it is this sort of classical sense of I want really great sounding captures of the of the instruments and the group playing. He really goes for a level of sonic clarity that is before his recordings were really kind of unmatched. It's a very different sound than the Van Gelder stuff. That sounds great as well, but ECM has more of a um, it, it almost sounds like classical music style recording for jazz in in my ear to my ears. Um, He's interested in capturing the emotion of the music. And I, I watched a video where he talks about um, various parts of his process. And I'll share a quote with you that I thought was just wonderful. Sound is not music. Music is using sound, organizing emotions in time. That sums up ECM records. That, that sums, sums up this record. But it sums up definitely what I've heard on ECM. Um, so, uh, also, I hope I didn't murder the names of the players too badly. Um, I tried to, I downloaded the jazz pronunciation guide, uh, cause sometimes I mess up the names and, um, that there's a link to that. Actually, it's kind of funny, uh, in the description, if you think, if you find that helpful. Um, and I've also got some links to this actual band, uh, playing live some of the songs from this record. Uh, so that's also in the description. And, and now the notes that I'm going to talk about here for the tracks are also in the description so that you can take the notes, sit down, find a quiet place, and mindfully, attentively, just consume the music. Just let it wash over you and let, you have, let yourself have a real experience of something that's art, that's beauty. Um, we need that. We need more of that. So that's what this is all about. That's what this channel is about. <clears throat> so, um, first track on the record is Spiral Dance, and it's, I would classify this whole record as folk country jazz. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, jazz of the earlier periods, and traditionally, it, it, it has a lot of you know, modulation, a lot of uh, complex harmony in, in many cases. It's, it's not one, four, five, one. It's not like a rock and roll song. Um, and you're pretty sophisticated stuff, usually. These are more like folk songs in terms of the harmony is relatively pretty simple. Um, it, and you'll know what I mean when you hear it. It's not as, uh, you know, cycle of fifths. It's not as just as, as
as involved as a traditional jazz piece, but it's as ornamented and it's lush, so it still sounds jazzy. And Keith is playing a lot of, he's really busy and he's all over the place, but the actual underlying harmony is not that complicated. So he finds a way, they all find a way to make this recording still have that improvisational, this jazz feeling, um, but it also sounds like folk music a little bit too. Um, so remember, this is 1974. So these players have absorbed all the previous jazz traditions and, and rock and roll and bring all of that. I mean, they've got funk and fusion and rock and roll, free jazz, avant-garde, free jazz. Um, they've got cool, they've got hard bop, bebop, swing. I mean, these guys have played all this music. So they bring all of that to this recording and this style. And one of the pieces, one of the things I'd like to, to mention is the ECM style, specifically with the drums. Um, as a drummer, if someone in a group says, you know, this is kind of like an ECM feel, I know exactly what they mean. They mean John Christensen or one of the other players, Dijonette, played on some of these kind of recordings as well. It's a very um, loose feel. Um, there's a lot of linear playing where instead of playing, you know, like da 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 and always doubling and having a uh, doubling of, of instruments like on the drums, they might break it up to where they'll play a cymbal, a snare, and a bass drum and, and not play them in unison and use like the hi-hat, instead of having the hi-hat be um, keeping solid time, they'll use it just for accents, just splashes to accent figures. And at, at times the music sounds like it's out of time because remember, they've absorbed, these guys have played free jazz, they play avant-garde, they've done all of that. So they, they bring that to this, but it's still in time. But it's definitely kind of, it kind of like ebbs and flows quite a bit uh, in places. Uh, and all the instruments do that, not just the drums. Keith Jarrett's doing that on the piano and um, the bass playing is fantastic on this record. His tone is killer. Um, so I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Um, and notice in Spiral Dance, also just another point on it um, to finish it off. Um, there's this vamp at the top where they're playing and a vamp is a repeated phrase and then they go into the melody. And that, this happens a lot throughout this record where they'll be sort of soloing over a vamp um, or getting a song started with the vamp and then the melody will come in and you really get the sense that the instrumentalists are listening, waiting for the melody to come in and they might not know. And that happens a lot on gigs. Uh, or in sessions, you'll be listening and going, okay, the soloist isn't ready yet. Uh, there they go. Now we're into the actual tune. Um, and, you know, it's called a chorus all the way through the tune. The first time it's called the head, you know. And you also can play the head one more time usually at the end of the tune. We talked about that in the first video I recorded. If you haven't watched the first two videos, I highly recommend you do that because I talk about song form and some of the key elements of, of jazz that really will make these other videos um, easier to understand. So, and the song forms on this album, a lot of them are mostly like like a like a through piece where it's it's just like a folk song with like refrains and then vamps as well. Um, so listen for that. <clears throat> Next tune is Blossom, and so you've got the sort of up tempo spiral dance to start us off, and then it kind of comes down a level, and we get into Blossom, very introspective, um, nice. Um, interplay between Garbarek and Jarrett um, and it, it, it's, a, it's a long piece so um, you really get a chance to close your eyes and really focus and, and when you do that maybe pick an instrument and say okay I'm just gonna listen to the bass for a little bit okay that was nice I'm gonna now turn my attention to just the piano and then you can say okay well now I'm going to attentively listen to the whole group okay and um, the third track on side A is as long as long as you know you're living yours. Now this is interesting. Steely Dan's Gaucho song off the, of the album of the same name uses the theme from this song. And anybody who knows the Gaucho, if you hear this, you'll go, oh my God, that's Gaucho. So Jared had to, Jared's people sued uh, uh, Steely Dan and eventually won the lawsuit. And so now if you go to Spotify and you look at the credits, you'll see Keith Jarrett is credited on Steely Dan, Steely Dan's Gaucho, which that's amazing. Um, you know, but Jarrett wasn't as known 
he was known in the jazz community for sure, but he definitely wasn't as big as he is now of, of a name. So maybe the piano player played it and they weren't aware that it was from a Jarrett recording. It, it could all just be, we didn't know when the record came out. Um, uh, but either way, Jarrett's on a Steely Dan record as a credited writer, which is pretty cool. Um, moving on to side two, the title track of the album, Belonging, starts off side two. And uh, it's a haunting melody by Garbarik. Uh, you kind of get that sense of nostalgia, some longing. Um, it's a short tune, and it leads us right into the next tune, the wind-up, which is pretty rhythmic, uh, pretty complex, a lot of dynamics, almost like folk bebop. It really moves along quite a bit. The instruments are really uh, just, it, it reminds me of Dixieland, like I said before, where they're all playing kind of at once. Um, but the style is totally different. Um, and notice they, they kind of go, this album, one of the things that differentiates it and the ECM style is instead of playing so much like swung time, it still swings, but it's more straight. But in this one, for the end, they do go into a more like a, a more of an up-tempo swing. Um, so they're kind of flowing in and out of fields. Um, Jarrett takes a full chorus solo on this one by himself. The band just drops out, as does Garbarik. Um, and notice the, at the very end, the band's sort of vamping, their solos going on, and then Garbarik cues the band by starting the melody for the final chorus, and then they all follow him. At least that's what it sounds like to me. I don't think it was prearranged. I think um, it was just like, yeah, well, when you're ready, you move on. And, and so it gives it sort of a spontaneity that I think is really nice. And the last tune is the solstice. It's called Solstice. And it is a meditative, sort of lyrical, melodic, pensive, painting sort of a winter scene. Um, it's, it's, this one has especially got a lot of sections that feel very free and out of time, but not too much. And you never really feel like they're completely free, like a free jazz kind of a thing, because the folk sensibility and the sense that they're all playing um, keeps you to where the time feels like it's continually moving, but it definitely is slippery and loose, um, and it's a nice meditation. Um, this album is very accessible to people who don't like jazz um, because of the harmony not being too far out, and the melodies are really catchy. Garbarek is, you know, he's a fantastic, uh, he's fantastic at creating melodies and creating melodies with variation that don't get boring. Um, there are saxophone players who play like pop saxophone, who just, it sounds cheesy and kind of corny. Some of these melodies could go that way, but they don't because of how great of a player he is. So um, Keith Jarrett group, his European quartet, Belonging, and I uh, hope this is helpful and I hope you get it on vinyl or stream it via the links in the description. And again, like, subscribe, comment, and hope to see you next time.